Hello, humans, and welcome to another episode of Gen X Gamer. Well, Pal World is setting the world on fire, and it's having major repercussions. Well, guys, let me tell you. First of all, I woke up to some good news. All of a sudden, after I announced, you know, that I was retiring <laughs> from doing live streams and, and making long-form videos, I got a notice from YouTube saying, hey, you're reinstated. <laughs> It's the weirdest thing, right? The weirdest thing. They had been sitting on my appeal for months, for months. And then they finally reached out. You know, I don't know if somebody saw it or whatever. Well, whatever the case is, they I, they, I got out of YouTube jail. But, you know, I'm still not going to have the voice to do those things. But I thought I'd come here and tell you and tell you about this story right here. Guys, Pal World is a game changer. Let me tell you why. There's other gaming companies <clears throat> excuse me, that are looking out there and saying, why didn't you guys build this? Why, why aren't we having 1 million users, right? Whenever you have success, people will come after you, will duplicate you and do many things. Now, the failure of Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, whatever the hell, you can put any other color. They, you know, Nintendo and Pokemon, uh, they fell asleep at the wheel. Yeah, they really did. And now what's causing controversy, number one, is the mod that is being put out there with Corpse, with Ash, Ketchum, and you know the mods are going to go with Pokemon, and there you, you, you already know it's going to happen. But the controversy here is that such a, small, such a small crew developed this game that is very popular. Now, not any small crew could have done it. For example, if you had John Alvarado <laughs> at the head of this project, he couldn't have made it, right? But a small team of people using bot assets and AI made this game, right? They really put a lot of people to shame, not only, you know, uh, their peers in smaller companies, but also the majors. Because they're looking at their crew going, what the hell, guys? How, how can these guys make this so popular so soon? And we're sitting here three, five, ten years in development to make a game that, that is not going to have as many users, right? It's all about the money. It's all about the money. If you, you know, if you're in, in the process, that's, that's cool, right? But they're into sales. And when you have this kind of success, people are going to come after you. You already know Nintendo's coming after these boys. You already know. But it really is a testament to the tools that you can use with a smaller group of developers, whether it's AI, bot assets, or what have you, at the end of the day, the public doesn't care as long as the gameplay is good, obviously, based on these numbers, right? And they're looking at their staff going, I spent five times, ten times the amount of payroll, and you gave me this crappy Violet game or <laughs> this crappy Pokemon game? Those conversations are being had. The Nintendo Ninjas, of course, are going to come down on any mods that represent any of their intellectual properties. Now, what does that mean for the developers of this game? Well, it means that they need to hire lawyers right away, intellectual property lawyers at that, right? Patent lawyers of some sort. What I would do, or anybody that's smart would do, was would be to lay it in the front of Microsoft or any other company, say, um, I don't know, PlayStation, Sony? And say, hey, you want to buy this? I'll say, I'll sell you seventy <laughs> percent, because those big companies, whether it's Tencent or any of the big companies, will have the money in order to go to court to battle Nintendo if there's, you know, any issues coming up. Now, let me say this, guys: when it comes to intellectual properties, there's so many laws all over the place that you don't know where that can end up. Uh, and and with a, a team this small. You know, it isn't realistic to think that a company that used, you know, five, ten people, whatever it is, to, to make this game is going to be able to scale up and all of a sudden have a, a cohesive, uh, you know, IP department with, you know, intellectual property lawyers set up ready to battle anyone. I don't think they foresaw the success of this game to the scale that it's been. And the question is now, is it ethical to purchase, you know, assets or use AI to develop these models? Well, it's all about the licensing, right? If you purchased an asset that you're using in game and you didn't modify it that much, what does the license say? 
right? What does a license say? This is why I like talking about these things. You know, even when it comes to the Intellivision Miko, for example, when Tommy Tallarico says, this, um, you know, I produce this game or I, this game is, uh, you know, or this, uh, say this uh, music, you know, I made this music. Does he get to say that? Well, it depends how he paid the guy <laughs> that actually made the music, right? Even if he didn't make it himself, if he paid the gentleman to make the music and he, you know, afforded all the, you know, financial wherewithal to produce the product and part of their agreement is Tommy gets to say that it's his, well, that's the contract. People sign stupid contracts all the time, you know, especially artists. In this case, you don't know, we don't know, what agreements they signed with who, how they were developed, and he used them, right? And we're going to find out pretty soon, especially if Nintendo gets involved, because when Nintendo comes in, oh, they go scorch earth, baby. Everybody gets sued. You, your mom, your dog, <laughs> your neighbor in the back, whoever they told anything about this game, everybody's going to get on the chopping block, right? And rumors are that they're coming. And they're coming, especially because of the ability of modding the game and er inserting their own intellectual properties into this game. I think it's a, it's a moment, guys. I think this is a breakthrough moment where we're seeing how AI is going to affect the video game development. How it's going to be a great equalizer for smaller developers to use these tools to produce games that people want. Because the one advantage smaller developers have is... They can make what the public wants right away. You know, if they see a good idea that was just missed on A, Y, or Z, they can just go and do it. I think this is going to be better for the market. That doesn't mean you're going to own your games, though. That's a subject for a different video. <laughs> Guys, thank you so much for stopping by. This is all the voice I have today. I got about 8 to 10 minutes to do one of these videos about three times a week, and that's the schedule that I'm going to keep. I listen to your feedback, and let me tell you, the AI voice isn't there yet. It sounds like I'm reading something, and it just doesn't have any passion. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to save my voice for these important current events, and then I will use the AI voice for the shorts, you know, and just use different voices, um, you know, and hopefully that'll keep the channel afloat here. Can I bang out two or three of these? Yes. I'm saving my voice to appear in a friend's podcast or a friend's show here pretty soon. So I will do that. And hopefully I'll see you guys, uh, you know, next weekend because I have to get to work. Guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Remember to like and subscribe and keep the channel going. And I'll catch you on the next one. Take care. Yeah.